And we are live in three, two, one. Good morning and welcome to this public meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Today, we are considering a staff draft final rule to improve the safety of clothing storage units. This is an important rule and a major moment in the commission's efforts to establish safety requirements to prevent clothing storage unit tip overs. Many people here in the CPSC and outside the agency work tirelessly to get us to this point, and I appreciate all their work. We're going to start with any questions for the staff, if there are any. Uh, we have several staff members present in the event there are questions. With, our, with us are Kristen Talcott, Project Manager, Division of Human Factors, Director of Engineering Sciences, Meredith Kelsch, Attorney in the Regulatory Affairs Division, General Counsel's Office, also in attendance are Alex Muscoso, Associate Exec Director, Directorate for Economic Analysis, Dwayne Boniface, Assistant Executive Director, Jason Levine, Executive Director, Austin Schlick, General Counsel, and Alberta Mills, Commission Secretary. Each commissioner will have up to five minutes for questions or comments, and after the questions are complete, we'll consider any amendments. Once again, I remind everyone that while it's perfectly permissible to voice our personal issues, uh, personal opinions on legal issues. It is not appropriate to discuss any legal advice given to us by the general counsel's office outside of executive session. The legal advice we receive must remain confidential. With that we're going to turn to the questions for staff. I don't have any at this. Uh, I don't have any. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, do you have questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do not have any questions at this time. Commissioner Trumka. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have none. And Commissioner Boyle. And thank you. I have none either. Uh, hearing no questions, staff is excused, and we will begin consideration of the package that's before us. Now I'm going to entertain any amendments to the draft proposed rule that is before us. Um, go in order. Uh, Commissioner Feldman. You have an amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have an amendment, uh, and and would ask that uh, we call up uh, COPF one for consideration. Is there a second to this amendment? I second the amendment. Uh, having heard a second, we'll now move to consideration of this amendment. Other commissioners will ask any questions or uh, make any comments with respect to this amendment. I'll provide an opportunity uh, to uh, Commissioner Feldman to. Close if you want to start by giving us uh, 3 minutes on an explanation on the amendment. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So today we are proposing major changes to the final rule beyond what was initially. Uh, uh, released for for public comment and uh, in, in issued no notice on and given the significance of the changes and, and what I believe is the almost certain likelihood that this rule is going to be challenged in court. I would urge my colleagues to adopt my amendment, which in my view would help mitigate some of these risks. I want to make it clear I've supported and continue to support action to improve CSU safety, whether it's commission action on a final rule or whether it's action in response to a congressional direction. In 2019, for example, I su supported expediting this rulemaking to move forward with the NPR uh, when other commissioners would have continued uh, down the path of inaction. And my amendment to proceed with the NPR was adopted in the FY 2020 performance budget and later became part of that year's operating plan. And absent that direction, I believe it's possible that CPSC would still be studying this matter with no resolution in sight. Uh, however, as I said at the time, it was my hope that stakeholders, including uh, families of victims and furniture manufacturers and others, uh, would work to, to, together to find a consensus solution. And now I'm pleased to, to, to see that we have multiple paths forward available to us to solve this problem uh, so that no other families are going to face uh, the, the horrific loss that, that, that accompanies this particular risk. Um, and it appears, based on the conversations that I've had with the families and with Congress, uh, that the Sturdy Act may in fact be that consensus solution. It's already received unanimous support in the United States Senate. And if consensus legislation is at hand, we're going to be in a stronger position moving forward under that authority, given uh, uh, the work that all involved have put uh, uh, to, to, to put options on the table. I'm concerned that that we not move forward without first addressing what I believe are the obvious legal vulnerabilities that would subject this rulemaking to reversal 
or delay uh, in implementation if it were to get challenged in court. I think that issuing a supplemental notice of proposed rulemaking, as my amendment directs, would serve a dual purpose, uh, improving the legal foundations of our final rule and giving us time to see what happens in Congress with Sturdy. I've heard from stakeholders on all sides of the issue uh, that for the first time in a long time, there's consensus around the version of Sturdy that passed the U.S. Senate again unanimously. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to ask unanimous consent uh, also to enter into the record a letter that I received uh, signed by Parents Against Tip Overs and Kids in Danger, the Home Furnishing Alliance, Consumer Reports, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and others, um, uh, encouraging the immediate passage of, of the Sturdy Act, but also offering some mixed reviews about the effectiveness uh, of our proposal. Uh, can you share the, the letter? Because I don't think we... Uh, I will send around a copy of it uh, for, for the record. Um, but I've also heard directly from victims' families who supported the Sturdy Act because they believe that a federal law enacted by Congress and signed by the president would be stronger than the agency's rulemaking by itself. And of course that's true, uh, especially given what we now know uh, uh, about final agency action in this that we're debating today that, that does contain some obvious and known vulnerabilities. Uh, so while this issue has been going on for far too long, I think that taking a small amount of time now to improve the rules, uh, uh, final rules legal foundation is going to be worth it. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would I would ask for your and, and the rest of my colleagues' support on this amendment. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. At this point in time, we're going to turn to uh, questions or comments uh, from the commissioners, and I recognize myself for five minutes. And you know, Commissioner Feldman, I, I appreciate your concern and uh, your desire to promulgate a strong rule. Um, this rule has been under development for five years, and CPSC staff has put forward a robust mandatory safety standard that they project will save lives. You know, the differences between the, the final rule and the NPR proposal are relatively minor and grow out of the notice and comment process. You know, seeking further notice at this time, I believe it's necessary and would end up delaying implementation of the mandatory standard that's really designed to prevent furniture tip over injuries and deaths. And, Given that, I really think we need to move forward quickly. And so I, I personally can't support the amendment. Um, very next, uh, Commissioner Trumka, I don't know if you have questions or comments. Uh, I do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and thank you, Commissioner Feldman. It's, it's always great to think ahead to how rules might be challenged. And I often find myself doing that exact same thing. Fortunately, this is not a rule to which I can envision any credible challenge. And the rule's been meticulously put forward. It's well reasoned, well researched, and well supported. It is the solution to match the problem. So, in this instance, I don't share your concerns. Uh, in your proposed amendment, you pointed out four items that are different in the final rule than in the NPR. Not only are each of those four items a logical outgrowth of the NPR, and, and each are minor, but we're actually talking about areas where we've scaled back items in response to industry comments to accommodate them. Um, we solicited comments on these items. We received comments on these items and we didn't make them more onerous. We granted accommodations based on those comments. Uh, we gave industry a carve out for lightweight dressers because they don't pose the same risk. That was a huge burden reduction because lightweight dressers account for 10% of the market. Industry complained about ambiguity in our testing procedures. So we eliminated all ambiguity and and uh, in our testing procedures, and we switched the way that we simulate carpet from a tilted platform to a block as industry requested. And your amendment doesn't address the uh, doesn't address the most significant departure that our our final rule makes from the NPR, which is the drastic expansion of our effective date from the NPR that we had thirty days to one hundred and eighty days, which is what we adopt here. That's the last thing I wanted to do is delay the benefits of this rule. But we did. Uh, and we did that because we considered the industry comments and gave them some credence. And so the result is that industry is left with zero legitimate complaints. We've given accommodations everywhere they said they needed them. And we did that without compromising safety. So I can't picture us being on any more solid footing than we are. And for those reasons, I'm a no on the amendment, but I appreciate your thinking on it. Thank you, Commissioner, Commissioner Boyle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I also wanna thank Commissioner Feldman for his amendment. 
I am in complete agreement that a strong and legally supportable rule is essential here, uh, but I believe that's what we have before us. I believe the comments uh, that staff reviewed and responded to um, were thoughtful and um, uh, put us on a good legal footing. I do think uh, what we have before us is a logical outgrowth of what uh, we put it put forward in the NPR. And so I, along with, uh, I want to support my uh, colleagues, uh, Commissioner Feldman, uh, Commissioner Trumka, and uh, Chair Holm Sarak, in saying that, I, well, I support your thought on this. I and agree that a legally uh, supportable rule is what we all need. That's what we have before us, and I um, will not be able to support this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Paul. Commissioner Feldman, did you have any other things that you wanted to add? No, not at this time. I would uh, go ahead and request the yeas and nays at your direction. Yeah. Hearing for no further questions or comments, uh, thank my fellow commissioners for their engagement on this amendment and move to vote on it. Um, Commissioner Feldman. I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka. I vote no. Commissioner Boyle. I vote no. And I vote no as well. So the yeses are one, the no nays are three. Uh, the amendment is not adopted. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, did you have other amendments? Not at this time, no. Commissioner uh, Trump, did you have amendments? I do not. Commissioner Boyle, do you have amendments? I do not have any amendments. Hearing no amendments, um, no more amendments. Um, I move to approve the staff's final. Uh, draft final rule and to direct publication the same in the final register. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. We have a second. We can move to the vote. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote no. Commissioner Trumka? Enthusiastically, I vote yes. Commissioner Boyle? I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. Uh, the yeses are three, the noes are one. The motion to approve staff's draft final rule for clothing store units, units passes. Uh, the draft final rule has been approved and shall be published in the Federal Register. So at this point in time, uh, we have up to 10 minutes per commissioner for any closing remarks. And I'm going to rec recognize myself for the 10 minutes, first 10 minutes. Over the last 20 years, nearly 200 children have been killed and many others injured from dressers that fell on top of them. These tragedies have gone on far too long and the CPSC has been working to address this hazard by warning commissioners about the, uh, sorry, warning consumers about the dangers from tip overs, encouraging the furniture be anchored to the wall, recalling unstable uh, clothing storage units, and over the past five years, developing this mandatory safety standard. On a personal note, I started working on the issue of furniture tip overs about 15 years ago as a staffer on the Senate Commerce Committee. And despite the work and dedication of parents who lost their children, changes come far too slowly. That's why I'm particularly pleased to be a member of this commission as it's taking such a huge step forward today towards making furniture safer. So the rulemaking could not have been done without the tremendous work of a team of CPSC staff who put together the over 600 page package that provides the basis for this rule. And I would like to take the opportunity to thank the individuals who worked on this rule. Bear with me for a moment. Those individuals are Kristen Talcott, Meredith Kelsch, Adam Suki, uh, Suad Wana Nakamura, Rana Balchi Sina, uh, Daniel uh, Taxer, Benjamin Mordecai, Adam Howie, Jose Heda, Charles Smith. Susan Prosper, Amelia Hairston, Frederick Millett, Hope Nesteruk, Brian Baker, David Miller, Tammy Massey, Michael Nelson, Caroline Paul, Mark Kumagai, Alex Moscoso, Dan Weiss, Robert Franklin, Maxwell Sanborn, Zachary Goldstein, Lawrence Mella, Andrew Newins, Susan Foley, G uh, Gina Collins. 
And I apologize if I missed someone, but I did want to highlight the individuals who actually do the work that form the basis of the commission's actions. Nothing would be done without them and they deserve recognition and our thanks. I'd also like to take a moment to express my deep appreciation for the dedication and the efforts of the members of Parents Against TIP owners who have drawn from their personal tragedies and made it a mission to make ensure that others not suffer the same loss and pain. And there are also so many others in the community consumer product safety community, like advocates and members of Congress who have worked tirelessly to push for a solution to this hazard problem. Our efforts today are just the beginning. We'll vigorously enforce this rule and continue our efforts to uh, remind the public to anchor furniture they currently have in their homes. With that, I'm going to turn to my fellow colleagues for any statements they have. So, Commissioner Feldman, do you have a statement? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and I, I want to echo uh, your comments and thanking staff for the work that they put into this. Uh, I, I'm concerned that that what we're doing today is sacrificing a strong legal foundation for the sake of expediency. We've done too much work on, on this rule and invested too many uh, resources to push through a final rule that has known vulnerabilities. Uh, a rule that is stayed or overturned offers zero consumer protections. Uh, for over a decade, when I got to CPSC, the agency had been dithering on this rulemaking without pursuing any meaningful action to protect children from CSU tip overs. And, and uh, only when I offered an amendment to get the ball rolling on a mandatory standard did we see any movement from CPSC on this matter. Uh, even then, when the commission had begun testing in earnest in support of an NPR, uh, the agency shut down its laboratory and mothballed its work for uh, de delaying uh, uh, progress on this for almost a year. So now we're rushing to finalize a rule that has obvious vulnerabilities and that's going to get challenged and, and, and quite possibly stayed or overturned. Uh, we could and should have worked to fix these problems uh, and, and, and it, to do so now, especially when there's a, a stronger consensus path on the horizon in the form of sturdy, uh, I, I do have concerns uh, and we'll see where this goes. But I, I appreciate staff's work on, on getting this far. Uh, uh, it is my hope that, uh, that, that that eventually we do get to a point where uh, there is a strong rule in place uh, that's durable uh, and, and is able to succeed uh, uh, challenges. Uh, we will see how this plays out. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Trumpka, do you have a statement? Thank you. Uh, families across the country have tragically lost children because of unsafe dressers tipping over. We know some of them. Parents who transformed their pain into energy and effort to prevent others from suffering their fate. And I'd specifically like to thank Janet McGee, Kim Amato, Lisa Seifert, Megan DeLong, and Brett Horn. On behalf of a nation of grateful parents, thank you. You've fulfilled your mission and you've helped CPSC to fulfill ours. Today, we passed the strongest possible rule to prevent tip overs. Lives will be saved. Families will be spared from tragedy, and I hope that it brings you some peace to know that you helped get us to this solution. And as we reflect on this victory for safety, one lingering thought remains. Fixing this preventable problem should never have been this hard. The furniture industry knew about this problem for decades. And though the industry had the opportunity to eliminate the problem through its voluntary standards process, it refused to do that for decades. And even now, industry fights tooth and nail against this rule. So we have to ask ourselves why. And the answer is as little as $6 or $17. That's it. I mean, that's the added cost of making a dresser that won't tip over. Somewhere in corporate boardrooms, people decided that children's lives weren't worth the extra few dollars that it was gonna take and they'd prefer to sell unsafe dressers and keep making that money. They let greed triumph over responsible decision-making. The industry has made it abundantly clear that they will not do the right thing until they are forced to do the right thing. And today we're finally forcing them to do that. This is a textbook example of a problem that will only be fixed by regulation. Today we delivered that fix, and I thank you to everyone who got us here. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boyle, did you have a statement? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. First, I too want to thank all of the CPSC staff who worked tirelessly to bring this package to the Commission 
for their commitment over many years to protecting unsuspecting vulnerable consumers from the tip over hazards created by unstable dressers and other clothing storage units. This is a strong rule. This is an important rule. This rule will save lives. Nearly 200 devastating deaths and countless injuries have occurred when unstable dressers and other clothing storage units have fallen on young children and others. The impact this rule will have on two distinct vulnerable populations is hard to overstate. Not only does it protect toddlers and young children who are particularly at risk from severe injuries and death caused by tip overs, it protects seniors who the data show also suffers significant injuries and death as a result of unstable CSUs. This action is no doubt long overdue. The rule represents the culmination of over a decade of advocacy, enforcement, and consumer education by the agency. Consumers do not and naturally would not anticipate the potential for tip overs from these everyday items. The very ordinariness of CSUs, familiar products that consumers do not expect to be dangerous, and the continued threat that they pose is what demanded this action today. Although I recognize the importance of working with voluntary standards bodies, we must impose mandatory requirements when those efforts are inadequate, not effective, or timely. In the face of many years of foot dragging by industry, the Commission is taking decisive action today, and I am proud to support this important measure. It is time for furniture manufacturers, along with standards making bodies, to embrace the meaningful action required to make these clothing storage units safer. The final rule goes further than existing voluntary standards and accounts for real world scenarios. What is more, CPSC staff carefully reviewed public comments and made revisions to the notice of proposed rulemaking to account for industry and consumer concerns. These changes should provide an additional clarity moving forward, making it easier for manufacturers to expeditiously come into compliance. What we do at CPSC makes a difference. The use of our regulatory authority makes a difference. Today, we are making a difference in the lives of our most vulnerable consumers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. And thanks again to all the staff for the hard work and for the efforts of all my fellow commissioners. With that, this concludes uh, today's decisional meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission.